Do I get a wave? Oh, barely a wave from the sport bike guy. Just wait, buddy. This thing's gonna be fast and I'm gonna come catch ya. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. This right here is my 2021 Honda Ruckus. 49cc scooter. You don't need a motorcycle license to ride one of these. You do have to have a little bit of a registration sticker depending on your state. No plate insurance so pretty simple cool way to get around town now with the 49 cc get motor that comes stock on these little honda ruckuses there are some pieces that you can install to get a little bit more power out of it so today we're going to be doing like a stage one modification video right now i'm out here riding around to get sort of a baseline of how fast the scooter can actually go once we get that baseline, I am then going to head to the garage and we're going to install a stage one kit. So let's uh, go for a quick ride here. I of course have the regular speedometer here. This thing is completely, completely stock. I did download an app which will show me my elevation. Currently in Colorado, so I don't really have a ton of like long flat roads. Currently at 5,635 feet in elevation, so not ideal. Generally motors are going to run a little bit better at sea level, but we're dealing with what we got. I'm going to modify and tune this thing to hopefully give me maybe 50. 55 I would be super stoked if we could get 60 miles an hour out of this thing but that will probably require some heavier modifications than what we're doing in this video if everything goes well today we should see a little bit of a speed increase and then once everything is dialed in for the stage one kit then we'll bump up to a stage two kit in another video and that will hopefully put us closer to that like 50 maybe 55 mile an hour mark as i'm riding around my current weight is 180 pounds obviously a lighter rider will have a higher top speed for the most part and of course it depends on your elevation and terrain as well so far it looks like the stock speedo is pretty spot on with the gps looks like we've done about 30 miles an hour so far Going uphill like this, obviously gonna cut back on that speed. The reason I want this thing to do roughly like 50 or 55 miles an hour is because of the speed limits around here. If I get closer to downtown, the speed limit drops quite a lot, but out by where I'm at right now, I think some of the max speed limits other than highways are like 55. So if I could do 50, I think this thing would be a little bit more practical for my current location. Now, once we get to the garage, one of the first things we're going to do is install a new CDI, which essentially will just like remove the rev limiter. It's sort of like replacing the ECU, but it's not the ECU. We're actually gonna be tapping into that today. So here I'm going uphill doing about 35. So that's not too bad. Of course, if I have the wind at my back and I'm tucked and I'm going downhill, that is when we will see our highest top speed. So hopefully once I get over this little crest here, I can tuck a little bit and maybe we'll get 40, 45 miles an hour out of it. Going downhill is obviously kind of cheating. So I know the baseline in a straight line is roughly like 30, maybe 35-ish. We'll see if we can go a little bit faster here. Do I get a wave? Oh, barely a wave from the sport bike guy. Just wait, buddy. This thing's gonna be fast and I'm gonna come catch ya. All right, downhill, we're at 34, 35, 37, 38, 39. So 41 looks like it's a top speed. Since I'm wearing a helmet, it's hard to tell if I'm actually hitting the rev limiter. It kinda sounds and feels like I am, but this thing is very quiet. Once we get around to the stage two kit, in probably the next video, a follow-up video, we're gonna have even more performance mods to clean up the airbox, the exhaust, and a few other little gadgets in there. All right, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's all she's got. So I think 41 is the top speed that we saw there. 41.6 miles per hour. 180 pound rider at 5,600 feet in elevation. Now let's go get some parts installed and see what we can make this thing do. All right guys, here we go. Like I mentioned, gonna be doing the CDI first. This is coming from NCY Motorsports. 
These will work on zoomer scooters, but also ruckuses if you have the correct like wiring harness. So hopefully everything in this box is correct. Tools for this one, gonna be pretty simple. I am gonna have to pop off this cover. So Phillips head screwdriver there, got a set of pliers and some wire cutters and crimpers. Let's see what this box looks like. All right, so here we have the unit itself and then just a pretty simple wiring harness. We're going to tap into the ECU with these wires over here. These are going to be for power and all in all, it should be pretty straightforward. Also a little kind of splice connector there. Once we get this installed right here, I also have the Polini high-speed variator and then some Dr. Poli five and a half gram weight. So. That's gonna come later. Once we get this thing installed, I don't know if we're gonna see much of a top speed increase, but hopefully. Now let's start popping these panels off. So here's a first look at everything pulled off. And right here is the ECU. We are going to be tapping into this wire right here. I'll give you guys a close up look at this later, but a black and yellow wire into the actual wiring harness of the bike. And then over on this side, we are going to be utilizing this plug as well as another one of these wires over here on the relay. And we're gonna ground this unit out as well. Now the very first thing is going to be cutting this wire just about in the middle. I shouldn't have to pull back any of this little loom electrical tape going to cut this. I'm going to strip this wire back. Now on the harness itself, right here we have these two little butt connectors. These will actually pop off. And now I will crimp these two little connectors onto these wires and get everything ready to go. So now with those connections on, we have yellow going in and orange coming out. Now eventually I'll clean up all these wires, but I'm gonna be working on the ruckus quite a lot. So pulling the wiring harness over to the right side of the bike now, and it looks like we will connect the actual unit. A little six pin connector right there. And then I will have to find a place to tuck this thing up in here to make it clean. Now onto the right side of the bike, you will notice this little connection here, a little red connector. It's a blue wire with a little yellow stripe. We're going to take another plug on this harness, blue wire, and connect that. And I believe this red one here will not be used for this application. Green wire going right to the battery terminal. And now this red wire, we're going to get onto one of these over here, I believe. Now to make my life a little bit easier here, I'm gonna pop these relays off of the little bracket that they're mounted to. Now this one I am going to have to cut the wire loom back a little bit. It's really just like electrical tape. And now with a little bit of slack in this wire, I should be able to get this little connection on there. I need to cut this a bit more. With these little connectors here, you can tell one side is open and the other side is closed. So I will put the open side over this wire. Now I'll take the other wire from the new harness, slide it into the slot that is closed, and now we're going to crimp this down to basically pull power from this wire here. Connection seems pretty solid. So to recap, this is what it looks like all rough. We tapped into the ECU with that wire there, plugged the actual unit into the wiring harness, got power, tapped into this cable, and now I'm just gonna sort of like loosely shove this stuff back in. I actually might not even throw the fairing on. So we'll get this tidied up and go and take it for a spin. All right, same path as before so far. Doesn't feel different at all. Essentially, what this is really doing is just like unlocking more potential in the future once I install the rest of the mods. So I think this is a good first step. Crucial mod especially if you're changing out breather tube, variator pulley intake, exhaust, stuff like that. So doing 31 up this little hill here, literally feels exactly the same, just slow. <laughs> now to hit the rev limiter on a flat, 
it would take a long time so I'm just gonna kind of expedite things and go down the same hill that we went down before and see if we can get just a little bit more top speed out of it wouldn't be surprised if absolutely nothing changes at all though 35 on a little flat section right here I'll even be happy if we get 42 miles an hour right here I did not put the fairing on so maybe we're saving weight and it'll go a little bit faster let's see 39 40 41 42 43 43 and holding again I'm not like full tuck right now maybe if I tuck all the way down no nope. and now on this flat we're holding 40 ish pretty consistently so that top speed was exactly 43 miles per hour there now it's time for a little bit more of an in-depth install all right now while the bike is cooling down might as well open up this variator see what we're working with got where the weights go got the backing plate little standoffs this actually looks like it comes with like a new little boss Ooh, and weights as well so i'm not sure what type of weights i'm gonna go with but i do have these doctor pulleys here so i think i'm gonna just start with them you can mismatch weights and stuff like that so essentially the way these go you can see here how there's kind of a point and a flat spot those are going to be facing up when you place them in here these little spacers clip onto the back plate just like that and now we will line this up make sure all the weights are sitting properly and now you want to make sure that if you are flipping this thing upside down you're holding that back plate tight the way the weights stay in place also the new boss once we get the cover and everything pulled off will slip right inside of here and that's what the belt will run over now this part's going to be pretty boring we are still a little bit hot to the touch so we'll kind of skip through this stuff but essentially i'm going to be removing the kickstarter and then pulling off this cover looks like i will also need to remove some other pieces here that way i can pull that cover clean out Now that we've got this opened up, you want to make sure that you keep this little gasket here. This thing sort of just sits in place right here on the actual cover itself. Now I'm going to remove these two bolts here, the drive face and back here at the clutch. Now when you pull off the drive face, you will have a little washer here. Just gonna set all that stuff to the side. And now if we pinch the belt, we'll just slide right off like that. And then pull the whole assembly out. And then make sure I grab the back and pull this whole assembly out. We're gonna be just swapping this entire thing here. So there you can see the little boss. And here's the back plate. These roller weights are similar to the one that came in the kit, but of course we are going to experiment with these to see which gives us the best performance. Now at this point, it is a good idea to sort of clean out everything inside of here. As you can tell, super dirty. I actually haven't even done the first oil change on the scooter yet, so I will get around to that eventually for now. Just gonna make sure everything inside of here is clean because hopefully after these mods I won't have to open this back up again. Now I'm going to install the new Polini that we just put together with those new weights in there. Again, make sure you're holding on to the backing here. Slide that over, that way the weights do not move. Now I can reassemble the back half. Give this a little pinch. Hopefully I can slide this over the boss. Now all that's left to do is really just reassemble everything. Now it's probably a good idea right now to use some Loctite, but since I'm probably going to be pulling this stuff off in a little bit, I'm just gonna leave this off for now and just make sure everything is snug just for testing. Now the drive face and the washer can 
go back on. And now reinstall the cover and we should be good to go. All right, let's see how this thing feels now. Already, feels like it's revving a little bit higher. I don't know if the pickup seems any faster, but I'm also feeling like I'm gonna have to play with these weights because it doesn't feel all that different. I feel like it could use a little bit more like torque down low until we get up to that higher speed, but now we're doing 32, 33. It's so hard to tell because these things are so slow to begin with. You're really only looking at like a mile per hour or two as you are modifying it. So I'm hoping we can get a little bit more out of it right now. If not, I'm going to go back to the garage, play with some of the weights and hopefully get this thing dialed in from the variator's perspective. So it seems like we're holding our speed decently up this hill doing 33. Feels a little bit different from the line, but so far it doesn't really feel any different from the top speed. All right, downhill section. All right, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Ooh, we are going a little faster. 44, looks like we may have gotten one more mile per hour out of this thing. I'm really gonna have to do some research and see what weights I should be running given my weight. Once we get into the stage two section of mods, we're going to rejet the car, put in a breather tube, intake, little like velocity stack style thing, and we'll, uh, see if we'll need to change the weights again all right guys so we started off today with a completely bone stock ruckus started with a top speed of 41.6 miles per hour then with the cdi install we made it up to 43 miles per hour and then with the new variators and the five and a half gram pulleys we ended up at 43.9 miles per hour so we'll call it 44 miles per hour that was essentially a stage one kit and in the next video we're going to bump up to a stage two kit which is essentially all of the parts that we have on here now but with a little more on top. We're going to add an engine decompression tube, a new intake, a new exhaust and also change out the jets and the carb on this thing. That's going to be a lot more involved so we're going to save that for the next video. Hopefully after those mods which are a little bit more extreme we're going to see hopefully 50. I'm really hoping for like 55 but we will cross that bridge when we get to it. If you guys have any tips on tuning a Ruckus, let me know. Like I said, I'm new to these GET motors and I really don't want to do a GY6, but we could do that in the future. And then once I get this thing up to an acceleration and a top speed that I'm happy with, then we'll start doing some like fancy aesthetic mods and modifications on ruckus are pretty much endless so i'm excited to sort of dive into that as well if you guys have any questions on any of these installs let me know in the comments down below i'll try to answer anything as best as possible there's also a lot of other great videos out there showing step by step how to do everything that you just saw me do today that's going to be all if you're new to the channel consider clicking subscribe I'm making videos every week as always thanks for watching i'll talk to you in the next one